Hello there everyone, and welcome to a new NumPy tutorial on the Future Programmer YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to continue learning about NumPy and its arrays. In particular, we're going to talk about the operations of indexing and slicing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now just like with lists in Python, NumPy arrays support the operations of indexing, which is accessing an element using an index, and slicing, which is accessing usually multiple elements using a start index and an end index. So let's first import numpy as mp so we can work with the numpy package. Now for one-dimensional arrays, the syntax of indexing and slicing in numpy array are the same as with lists and tuples. So we first write the name of the variable that contains the array, and then in square brackets, we pass in either an index or a slice. Now, an index is just going to be one number. Now, just like with Python lists and tuples, indexing in NumPy arrays start at zero. So the first element of a NumPy array is going to have an index of zero and not one. The second element is going to have an index of one and not two, etc. So we can grab the element, add this particular index from this array using this syntax. Or we can have multiple elements we can slice an array and grab multiple elements from this array using this syntax. So separated by two columns, we pass in three numbers. Optionally, we can pass in either two number. If we just pass in two numbers, it will be taken as start and stop. If we pass in three numbers, it will be start, stop, and step. So the start index is going to be the first element that is going to be returned from the slice. This will be the index of the first element that will be returned. Now stop is going to be the last element of the slice, but this is actually going to be one greater than the last element. So this is not going to be included in the slice that is returned. And step is going to be uh, the interval between the numbers. So if we have two, then it will be every other number. And uh, if it's three, then it will be every third number returned um, in our slice. So here we have a list of numbers and we have the array version of that list. And we can see these two lines printed out. It will be the numbers from 0 through 9. Now list at index 3 and array at index 3 is going to give us the third element by index of the list and the array, which let's take a look. So this will be the 0th element, the first element, the second element, and the third element. So for both of these lines, they will print out the number 3 because this is index 0, index 1, index 2, and this is index 3. Index 0, 1, 2, and this will be the number that is returned for the array. So we can see we get the same output for both lines. If we slice the list and the array with indices of 1 as the start and 4 as the end, what will happen is we can subtract these two numbers. 4 minus 1 is going to give us 3, which means this will print out three numbers. Same thing for arrays. This will print out three numbers. So we can go to the first element by index of the list, which is right here. We'll count up by three. So 1, 2, 3. So these two lines will return the numbers 1, 2, and 3, as you can see here. This is pretty similar. So it will be 1, to six, not including the sixth indexed element. It will be five elements between starting at one, and it will be every other element. So one through six, so technically this will be one until five, and it will be every other element. So let's take a look here. It will be these five elements, but since step is equal to two, we will only have one, three, and five in the return slice, as you can see in these outputs. A pretty cool thing you can do to reverse the order of a list in Python or a NumPy array is you can pass in no start and no end, and then you can pass in negative one as the step. Now, these two will be defaulted to their default value, which is going to be zero and the length of the array. So it will contain the entire array or the entire list. But since we pass in negative one as the step, this will reverse the order of the list. So instead of zero counting up to nine, it will be 9 counting down to 0, and we can see arrays also support this operation. When indexing or slicing arrays with multiple dimensions, so a 2D array or a 3D array or a 4D array, we pass in either an index or a slice for every dimension of the array in square brackets separated by commas. So here we have 
a slicing operation for a two-dimensional array. Now, I put these two um, these two things on separate lines. You don't have to do that. You can put it on one line or you can put it on two lines if you'd like to be more clear about the formatting. Or if, in this, in this case, I just have a lot of words here, so I put it on multiple lines to be more clear. So we have array. And then in square brackets, we pass two things, one slice and another slice separated by commas. Now the first slice is going to slice the outer dimension, the outer array of the, well, it would slice the outer array. And then we will slice the inner arrays returned from this initial slicing. It'll be more clear once we show some examples. So let's take a look at this array right here. It's a NumPy array with quite a few dimensions or it has two dimensions, sorry, it has two dimensions, and we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, five inner lists, each inner list containing four numbers. So this is a two-dimensional array. So we can pass in one and two things at most. So let's print this out. We can see this output right here. Now that array is defined, we can take a look at if we pass in one and two. So even though in this example, I showed slicing for both, you don't have to do slicing, you can do one index, one slice, you can do one slice and then one index, or we can do two indexes or two slices, whatever you want to do, it will be supported. So here we have array one comma two. So let's take a look at the outer array first. What is the first element by index? What is the first element of the outer arrays? This is the zeroth element. This is the first element. Okay, so this is the this is um, what's going to be returned if we just pass this. But since we have two here, we'll take a look at the inner array that is returned here, and we'll find the second element by index, the zeroth element, the first element, and the second element. So this will print out the number 30, as you can see right here. Now this example, we have a slice, and then we have an index. What's going to happen is, let's take a look at the outer dimension first, one through three. That means we'll have two small arrays returned from this operation with indexes of one and two. So we have indexes of one and two. So these two things is going to be our focus when we look at the two right here. Now two is going to give us the, um, well, the counting, it will be the third element, but by index, it will be the second element. So we'll take a look at the second element of these two things. What's the second element of these two things? Well, it will be 30, and 300. Since this is going to be 0, this is going to be 1, and this is going to be 2. So this operation is going to give us an array containing 30 and 300, as you can see right here. Now this example is going, going to contain a slice and another slice, so two slices. So let's take a look at these um, one by one. So the outer dimension, it will be from 0. By default, if we omit this, it will be um, considered as zero. So zero up to four. So this will be a total of four outer arrays. Um, but since we have step equal to two, it will actually only be less than that. So it will be zero to four, but every other array. So we have zero, one, two, three, four. But we're not counting the four since it ends before that. So it will be these four things, every other one of these things. So it will be this one and this one. And we're going from 2 to 4, that means 2 and 3 of these small array. So it will be 2 is going to be right here, and 3 is going to be right here. So this is going to print out 3, 4, 300, 400. So let's take a look, and we see that as our output. Now I would suggest that you take a look at these codes and also mess around with the numbers, and also maybe change around the initial array to really understand what slicing is doing for multiple, or slicing and indexing, um, how it behaves for multi-dimensional arrays in NumPy. Now, sometimes you will see three dots in square brackets. Now this is called, it is a type called ellipsis, which is used to fill up the number of columns needed for all the dimensions. So for example, these three lines right here print out the exact same things, but we can do either of them. Now in some cases, it is helpful if we don't want to write um, the colon. Colon is going to give us basically the entire dimension for uh, the entire thing for that dimension. So um, colon, colon, we can say this is a three dimensional array. So we pass in three things. But if we don't want to pass in two of these columns, we can just pass in dot, dot, dot. 
And yes, we can just pass in none of that if we want to do so, but we can also pass in three dots. And you'll see why that can be helpful in certain scenarios in a moment. So we can see these three things will, um, these three lines will print the exact same output. Now for this example, it is necessary to pass in the colon. So we can either do colon slash or colon comma colon comma one, which will give us this um, output right here, or we can combine these two colon colons into dot 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 slash or dot 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 comma one. And you can see that we get the same output no matter which choice we make. Now, in addition to accessing values of an array using indexing and slicing, we can also use these operations to modify an array. So here we have a, um, an array called ARR. It's a NumPy array containing the numbers from one through seven. So we print out array, and then we make a copy of the array for every one of these operations. First, we change all of these. So we use slicing. Basically, all three of these will be done using slicing. So we slice some of these values and we change all of them to zero. In this case, we change all of them to be multiplied by negative one. So if it was one, it's going to, or I guess it would be, uh, actually it will be two, it will be changed to negative two. If it's four, it will be changed to negative four, etc. And for this slice, we'll change these values to 100, 300, and 500. And we can see the output printed out right here. Now, this last example, you'll see we raise an error if we try this. So these four things print out just fine. We can see that two changes to uh, zero, so did four, and so did six. And this one, we can see uh, two, four, and six has been reversed or have been multiplied by negative one. And for this last example right here, you can see negative two, or sorry, it'll be two is changed to 100, 4 is changed to 300, and 6 is changed to 500. This last example though, we're trying to put 4 elements into the space of 3. So this is going to give us 3 elements, but we're trying to put 4 elements in place of those 3. Now that's going to give us a value error saying that we cannot broadcast input array from shape 4 into shape 3. That means we can't force 4 numbers into the place of 3, so we can't do this. Uh, we can either get rid of perhaps one of these numbers and we can see that will work out or we can just uh, you know not do this because this will give us an error. To summarize this lesson, we talked about indexing and slicing one-dimensional arrays in NumPy, also doing the same thing for multi-dimensional arrays, and also we talked about modifying arrays using indexing and slicing.